We act out things we don't understand all the time. And if that wasn't the case, then we wouldn't need a psychology or a sociology or an anthropology or any of that because we would be completely transparent to ourselves. And we're clearly not. So we're much more complicated than we understand, which means that the way that we behave contains way more information than we know. And part of the dream that surrounds our articulated knowledge has been extracted as a consequence of us watching each other behave and telling stories about it for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, extracting out patterns of behavior that characterize humanity and trying to represent them partly through imitation, but also through drama and mythology and literature and art and all of that to represent what we're like so that we can understand what we're like. And that process of understanding is what I see unfolding, at least in part, in the biblical stories. And it's, it's halting and partial and awkward and contradictory and, and all of that, which is one of the things that makes the book so complex. But I see in it the struggle of humanity to, arise, to rise above its animal forebears say and to become conscious of what it means to be human and that's a very difficult thing because we don't know who we are what we are where we came from or any of those things and you know the light life is an unbroken chain going back three and a half billion years it's an absolutely unbelievable thing every single one of your ancestors reproduced successfully for three and a half billion years it's absolutely unbelievable and we rose out of the dirt and the muck and here we are conscious but not knowing and we're trying to figure out who we are. And a story that we've been telling, or a set of stories that we've been telling for 3,000 years seems to me to have something to offer. And so when, when I look at the stories in the Bible, I do it, I would say, in some sense, with a beginner's mind. It's, it's a mystery, this book, how the hell it was made, why it was made, why we preserved it, how it happened to motivate an entire culture for 2,000 years and to transform the world. Like, what's going on? How did that happen? It's by no means obvious, and one of the things that bothers me about casual critics of religion is that they don't take the phenomena seriously, and it's a serious phenomena. I mean, um, not least because people have the capacity for religious experience, and no one knows why that is. And I mean, you can induce it reliably in all sorts of different ways. You can do it with brain stimulation. You can certainly do it with drugs. There's especially the psychedelic variety. They produce uh, intimations of the divine extraordinarily Regularly, people have been using drugs like that for God only knows how long, 50,000 years, maybe more than that, to produce some sort of intimate union with the divine. It's like, we don't understand any of that when we discovered the psychedelics in the late 60s. It shocked everybody so badly that they were instantly made illegal and abandoned in terms of research for like 50 years. And it's no wonder, because who the hell expected that? Nobody.